Hello, welcome to Mr. AP. Today I will be becoming Mr. College Board for a brief period of time and I will be tackling um well this is well this is SAT 14, SAT March of 2020 2019. However, I will not be doing the whole thing. I will just be telling you how to get an 800 or um let's say 780 plus just for you know security in case I get a couple wrong here. Um so how to get 70 80 plus or even 800 on the math section because of how ridiculously easy it is. I believe it's made for five graders by five graders. Honestly, college board should make it much easier. Actually, not as fine as it is. Watch me throw. I hope I'm not going to throw. Let's go to the math section. Now, I'm only doing math section, okay? Reading and language, those are actually kind of tough ones, so I'm not going to actually roast those. The math section is actually ridiculously easy. I feel like anybody can get 800 if they move fast enough and if they know what they're doing and they don't overthink. So we're going to get started right now. The math no calculator, actually, uh, yeah, actually, I'm going to scroll first before I set the rules. So here I'm going to set the rules. Uh, okay, you know what? Yeah, we're going to do blue rules. Number one. Um, since we're just gonna circle the answer or like write the answer instead of actually like bubbling in or like yeah instead of just bubbling in for our final time we're gonna add one minute to it plus one minute um bubbling in i'm just bubbling for bubbling because like i only actually test to be bubbling it in also i'm doing it on phone so it's actually a much smaller screen than like on computer or whatever so bear with me actually for that reason alone i'm actually gonna subtract one minute because of how inconvenient i'm doing the test i'm literally doing it on my phone the screen is really small guys please subscribe i'm kind of limited by my ability here um so yeah minus one minute because phone i'm literally using the s pen of my samsung s22 ultra so yeah that's number two all right number three what else i think i wanted another rule we're gonna add one minute because of bubbling because of how quickly we might finish this we're gonna subtract one minute because of phone and yeah we're gonna start with sat no calc no calc is 25 minutes 20 questions and then calc is um how long is calc crap do i have to google this give me a second um calc sat time um okay math no calculator uh yeah math calculator is 55 minutes okay so 55 minutes i definitely remember that i will not actually be pulling out the calculator here um, because, well, I have a physical copyright by near me, and you can hear me tapping if... I'll be doing no calc with no calc, obviously, and then calc with my actual physical calculator instead of on the phone. But I'll to show you and guide you to how properly to set up the problems so as to ensure what to actually put in into your calculator. Because the math section is honestly not that hard. You may miss one or two questions. Most of them are kind of... Most of them, for me, tend to be statistics ones, which is ironically because I took AP statistics <clears throat> and got a five. But, um yeah plus one minute bubbling purposes minus one minute um because it's on phone so it's kind of inconvenient here um yeah i think we're ready to get started now i think um and then i have the answer keys here i have my answer key here so i might just be able to subgrade myself pretty quickly um yeah i don't think there's anything else for calculator we could argue we're gonna add like two minutes for bubbling because there's more bubbling required so yeah we're gonna add two more two minutes i'm gonna have a timer when i'm gonna be editing this i'm gonna pl probably gonna add the timer so yeah I'm, i have a timer in front of me here 25 minutes i'll probably edit the timer on here as well we will begin with math no calculator and yeah the second i'll scroll down to questions i'm gonna click start on the timer and let's go okay all right guys this is so easy all right Tony spends $80 per month on public transportation. A 10-hour ride pass costs 12.5. A single ride pass costs 1.5. If G represents the number of 10 ride pa uh, passes Tony buys in a month, la, 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 la. and T represents the number of single ride passes T Tony buys in a month, which following questions best sets up the relationship between G and T. So 80 per month on public transportation. I believe that's the y-intercept. A 10 ride pass costs 12.5, and a single ride pass costs 1.5. G represents the number of 10 ride passes. 10 right passes um if he does 10 right passes each 10 right pass costs 12.5 um t represents the number of single right passes 80 dollars per month okay yeah that's easy because think about it a 10 right pass costs 12.5 and uh that is represented by g and then a 10 right passes and then a single ride is is t and it costs 1.5 and he spends 80 dollars 80 should be our 
what it equals to. This makes no sense. This makes no sense. Um, so 12.5 G. So this is the answer. Why? Because, uh, let me, let me circle that. Oh my God. Better. Ah, what happened? Oh no. How do I go back? Go back. How do I, uh, uh, man, I'm throwing. Okay. 12.5 times G plus 1.5 T because that's single pass. That's 10 times. That's, um, what is it? Oh, dang, I'm taking way too long. 10 right passes, okay, so it's D, obviously. Moving on to 2, in question above, T represents Brittany's total take-home pay in dollars for the first week of work, where H represents the number of hours she worked that week, and 1,000 represents the sign-on bonus, so why intercept if Brittany takes total takes home with uh, 1,576? Um, so it's asking for H, doesn't it? Yeah, how many hours? Okay, so plus 18 H, we do 576 equals 18 H, and then we get a really big number. Oh, crap. They actually want us to do the work. Um, all right. Well, if we divide it, shoot. Do they actually want us to divide it? This is some BS. Okay. 576 divided by 18. What is it? Um, zero. Then that's like three, right? 56. Yeah. Um, no, that's 54. What am I saying? And 36, too. Yeah. So the answer is 32. You just have to divide 576. One five one five seven six minus five one thousand divided by eighteen. Uh, how much time do we have to? Okay. Um, oh my God, another war problem. A clothing store is having a sale on shirts, pants. During the sale, the cost of each shirt is fifteen. The cost of each pair of pants is twenty five. Joe can spend um at most one twenty. If Joe buys us shirts and a P pair, okay, this is so easy. If it said most one twenty, it has to be equal to or less than. It cannot be greater than that. That makes no sense. Out and out so now we have ac literally 50 50 but it's so easy 15 dollars a shirt and then pair of pants are 25 and then these are the variables that make sense yeah it's definitely this one because 15 per shirt 25 per pants boom boom and then you get less than okay that's so easy what is the solution to this literally just do simple algebra like what so easy like okay 15 uh, minus 2x plus 4 i'm running out of space okay um plus 2x minus x plus plus 15 okay plus 15 equals 4 mm, you know what we're just going to subtract 4 add x to both sides so we're getting uh what are we getting we get 11 equals x yeah 11 that's easy we can easily plug it in quickly negative uh we got 6 times negative 3 that's negative 18 plug in 11 here negative 22 plus 4 that's also negative 18 that's our answer uh moving on for the function i've defined above what is the value of f negative 1 oh that's so easy literally plug in you get um Negative one cubed plus three, negative one squared plus, uh, that'll be actually minus six, negative one, and negative one. It's so easy, just it would be negative one. Um, that would be positive. So plus three minus, it wouldn't really be minus anymore, it would be plus, minus one. You'd add all of that, you get, um, you what is it, nine minus two, you got seven is the end, yeah, seven is the answer. Okay, uh, let's do six. Triangle ABC and triangle DEF, these are so easy. Are similar, okay, maybe not. Um, are similar triangles where AB and D are corresponding sides of D equals 2AB and the perimeter of triangle ABC is 20. What is the perimeter of triangle DEF? Okay, so they're similar triangles. AB and D, okay, I guess I could. I should probably draw them. Um, A, B, C, D, E, F. AB is equal to D, yeah, that makes uh, corresponding. D, E equals 2AB, so... Okay, let's label this side x and this 2x. And the perimeter of angle ABC is 20. Um, okay, well, we don't really know much about these triangles. That's the issue. What is the perimeter of DEF? Okay, um, oh, well, if we multiply x, so the perimeter, there's three sides we're working with. Um, if ABC is 20, and if each side is multiplied by 2 on the corresponding, that means the perimeter would be um, 6 times as much. So the answer would be D, if that makes sense. Because think about it. If we have um, th uh, 3x, whatever that length is, we're going to assume it's equal. We could, we could assume they're uh, equilateral triangle, actually. And then for this one, we have 6x. And if 3x equals... Actually, no, not 6x. We would say... Yeah, we figure out what x is. Um, 3x equals 20. 20 divided by 3 is x. And then... And then you would multiply this by 6. Shoot, now I'm getting a different answer. Hold up. Um, God dang it. Okay. 
So each side length is two times as much. Oh, we could actually just do this, actually. We'll work with a different value. Let's say this 5, that would be 10. 10, 10, 10, so 10. Um, this would probably be 10, and this would be 10. This would be 5, 5. It's 15, and then that would be 30. So it would be twice as much, the perimeter. So yeah, the answer wouldn't really be 120. It would be 40, wouldn't it? Yeah, because the whole perimeter would also be multiplied by... Yeah, that makes sense, because 3x is equal to 2 times... No, 6x is equal to 2 times 3x. So that actually makes sense in the context. The answer would be 40. Kind of confuzzling one, the geometry one. No jackrabbits in Australia before 1788. 24 were introduced by 1920. Oh, Jesus, 10 billion. If the population had grown exponentially, this would correspond to 16.2% increase on average in the population each year. Each year. Which following functions had the best models? Okay, that is... Okay. T years after 1788. Um, t okay, so on the year, when T is zero, there's 24 of them. That means it cannot be this, because this will literally just give you one. It could be this, that'll give you 24. It could be this, it'll give you 24. And it could be, it cannot be this either, because that wouldn't give you 24 when T is equal to zero. Instead, now we have two to work with. Um, if the population had grown exponentially, this corresponds to a 16.2% increase on average in the population each year. That means 100% one, time, so 1.162 makes sense. That would be a 16.2% increase per year. Per year, you put one year over there. Um, yeah, this seems to be making sense. Why? Because each time the population is increasing by 16.2% every year until 1920. You can't really check if it's 10 billion, but you got to assume it is. Um, Let's see here. Which of the following functions could be smart? Okay. I think, yeah, I think that's the answer. It wouldn't really be, uh, it wouldn't really be this one because this one just doesn't make, B doesn't make sense. That means they're doubling. Not even necessarily. Yeah, no, 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 it has to be C. Which of the following is equivalent to, oh my God, that's so easy. Like, what is College Board doing? You just add them up. You just add them up. 7x4 plus 7x uh, cubed plus 2x. Oh, that's also cubed. Okay, so 2x cubed. Okay, so 7x cubed plus 9x cubed. 7x to the fourth plus 9x cubed. Yeah, it's this one. Come on, you just add them up. They're so free low. Okay, All right, okay. Function f is defined by that. Function D is defined by that, which will find translations to the graph of F. Results in graph of D, blah. You just add everything. You just add to whatever this is, you add 3. So Y values become 3 greater. You literally move it up 3, upward by 3. This is so literally free. Um, We might not actually have any extra time, though. No figure A, E, B, D are parallel. B, D, C measures B, D, C, 58. Um, and ACE measures 62. Oh, what is the measure of CAE? Okay, this one's a little tough one. Eh. Mm -hmm -hmm. Actually, not really. Well, eh, controversial. All right, AE and BD. AE, BD, parallel, BDC is 58. ACE is 62. Hmm. Oh. But one thing, we can find this, right? 62 plus 58, what is that? That's 120. That means this is 60 to give us a 180, like, total. So that makes sense. Um, so that means this is also 60. And CAE is 60. Because that's how, I don't know the name, but that's how parallel lines work in the line going across them. Um, let's see, ocean graph, we use that to... Um, the speed s in knots of an ocean wave where p represents period of a wave in seconds period of the wave in terms of the okay so we just solve for p literally free low multiply both sides by two you get 2s equals 3p and you divide it by three and you get p equals 2 over 3s and that would be this one um equation for the graph shown okay this is literally free low all righty um or not, because this one's increasing by 2. Okay, 2, 3, 4. 4 is the y-intercept. Okay, nope, and nope. There we go, 2 out. Let's see, 
rise over run where for every one here and uh, no that's not a good one let's just do rise of negative four over run of two four six eight ten twelve negative one third oh yeah okay oh jesus fgh is inscribed in a circle of fg is congruent to arc gh so these are congruent i guess you could mark that and the measure of g is 30 okay what is the measure of angle h oh that is so free these two have to be congruent so we know uh, 180 minus 30 equals 150 we divide that by two if this is congruent and this is congruent um then these two are also congruent so literally both of them are 75 degrees this one and this one there we go which i'm following okay this one's a little tough one they're gonna lie mm -hmm. all righty i guess you could huh <laughs> okay so if we okay another way to rewrite this would be x plus 16 to the one half no, not one half to the one fourth. Uh, yeah. So that means. Oh, okay, I know what that means. And this literally x plus four. If you actually, so like this is squared, but then this whole thing is to the fourth. So what you would do is you would multiply it, because if exponent is raised to an exponent, you multiply them, and you get one half. So you get this one. So you get x plus 4 to the 1 half. So literally that. So free. Oh crap, I'm falling behind a little bit. Um, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if you multiply this by this. Wait, am I cooking or am I not cooking? I don't think I'm cooking, guys. No, I think I'm cooking. Am I cooking? I should be cooking. Okay. Um, x squared plus 8x. Um, yeah, this whole thing raised to the 1 fourth. Another way to rewrite this is x plus 4 to the second. Um, 1 fourth. Okay. And then you would multiply them and you get 1 half. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. Free low. Oh, no. An equation above ax constants, which are following, could represent the graph. Okay. Oh, a is less than b. Oh, crap. This is problematic. Um, let's see here. Uh, b y equals negative a x plus b plus b but b is very small but it's still positive meaning y intercept is positive so y inter actually no b divided by b is one so y intercept has to be one honestly oh okay shit that doesn't narrow down jack shit okay um b y now we do know negative a x, so the slope is negative. Um, but if it's poof, b is greater, a is small, b is great. Small divided by big, um, small divided by big is a fraction. So y equals negative a over b x plus one. So it will most likely be rise of something small over big run so rise of one over yeah that makes sense rise of rise of negative one over two that makes sense this one doesn't because that's rise of um negative two over one and that's just bigger that's a, that's a whole number this one gives you a fraction so let's see oh oh no calculator uh the writing thingy oh we're we're good we're doing good we got nine minutes and 50 seconds left bruh literally guys what is this like y'all seeing this like it's saying x plus x equals uh, that's 2x equals 9 like whoa and then you divide by both sides by 2 and you get x equals 9 over 2 like, whoa we got our answer so quick um unless i'm tripping but i don't think i'm tripping i think that's the answer yeah yeah that's the answer oh yeah this one's a bit tougher uh we can factor out the 11 x minus 3 x minus 3 we we do this boom boom equals x we get 11 equals x to check this we can plug it back in 121 minus 33 over 11 minus 3 8 equals 11 
Is that true? Well, shoot, let's quickly see. Um, 21 minus 33. Well, what do we get? 9, 9, 14, 14, we get 86 over a, I messed up. Unless I'm, oh, no. Let's see. 21 plus what gives you 12? I mean, 33. That's 12, yeah. So, minus 12. Because, yeah, 12. I'm tripping. 12, this gives you 88 divided by 8. Yeah, that's 11. Our answer is 11. I don't know why I have to check my work. I mean, I don't. I'm just doing it for y'all guys. Please subscribe. What is the solution to the equation above? Yeah, that should be right. Factor 11, cancel, cancel. Yeah, it looks right. If x, y, two, so, oh, that's, okay. Okay, that's actually a tough one. Not really, though. Um, mm, I hate this one already. Um, we would multiply one side by something that we can work with. We're solving for x and y first. Systems of equations. We know how to work with them, kind of. Let's multiply the first one by 2 over 3. 3 over 2. 3 over 2. If we multiply the first one times 3 over 2, we get... 3 over, oh crap, 3x plus, shoot, 9 over 2y. Maybe we should multiply by, no, let's multiply by 1 third. Just cancel out the y's first. So 2 over 3x plus y equals 31 over 3. And the, red, the other one we can just leave the same. We add them. And we get, shoot, 11 over 3x equals, shoot, 90, 121 over 3, right? Yeah, it makes sense, I think. 90 over, okay. And now we are solving for x, so we're dividing that, so that's times 3 over 11. x equals, let's see, 3. That gives us 11, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, that gives us 11. Okay. Now we know x is 11. Now we're solving for y. If x is 11, so this is 33, and minus y gives us 30. y equals 3. If y equals 3, we can check this also here. 9 plus 22 gives us 31. Yeah, we solved it. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So y equals 3, x equals 11. Now we plug it back in, and we get... Okay, 1, 1, 0, 0, plus 120, because we plug in the y, we get 120 here, we plug in the x, we get 1,100, 1,100 plus that, our answer is uh, 1, 2, 20. Oh yeah, moving on, moving on, we're falling behind, aren't we? Oh no, we're almost done with the test, but we have 5 minutes, so we should probably hurry up. Um, okay, if that, we're solving for t. What is the value of t? This cannot be that hard. Um, 9t squared minus 15t minus 14 equals 0. We can't really take out anything, so we have to do 90, 30. Okay, so we have to multiply these two, so it gives us negative 90, 90, and then 9 times 36, so negative 126, um, we do this method, 15, what number multiplies to negative 126 but adds up to 15, um, 2 and 73, and 63, god dang it, 2 and 63, no, um, 6 and, 6 and 21, yes, yes, 6 and 21, negative 21, Yo, I can't write. GG's. You know, 21 and 6. Yeah, that seems reasonable. Yeah, because if you add them, you get negative 15. If you okay. So now we can just pair them up. 9t squared minus 21t plus 6t minus 14 equals 0. Okay. Now, boom, 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 boom. We take out the 9. No, we can't take out the 9. Can we? 9, 9, 9. No, we can't take out the 9. We could take out the 3. Um, 3. Um, 3t. Oh my god, I'm struggling. We're failing, guys. GG's. Uh, 
t um 3t minus minus 7 and then for this one we could take out the 2 so we get 2 3t minus 7 equals 0 and now we have 3t minus 7 and oh and t has to be greater than 0 remember that because that gives us our answer um and 3t plus 2 so if we do this one if we do this one, we get a negative. Why? Because in this case, negative 2 over 3 is our answers. But if we use this one, we get t equals 7 over 3. This is our answer. The last question. The function h is defined above where a, b, c are integer constants. If zeros of the function are blah, blah, well, then 7, what is the value of c? Oh, crap. We're not getting an 800 on this. Okay. Mm -hmm -hmm. Okay. God dang it. Zeros of the function. Um, zeros of the function are, okay. Negative. Yo, this may be tough. How do we solve this? This is actually problematic. Could we, could we group it? No, we can't group it. Maybe we can. No, we can't group it. Oh, Lord. Um... I guess I could try plugging in each each one, but that's not the option, is it? Um, negative one twenty five plus a um twenty five plus not plus minus five x plus c not five x five b okay. Um, negative, okay, 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 it's fine, it's fine, 125, it's just going to be three systems of equations we have to solve, I'm not going to solve this in time, um, I don't think I'm going to solve this in time, what could C be, um, okay, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, okay, 6, 6, 36, 36, huh? 205216. Uh, I'm not going to solve this in time. I'm literally not. It's literally complex. Okay, we're going to call a game here. We're not, we're not solving this one. We're literally not. Um, shoot, what is C if the other ones are constant? You have to set up all oh, my seven seven seven. Uh, what is it? Forty nine times two forty nine, right? Is that the answer? It goes um, forty nine a plus seven plus seven b b b plus c. Now fudge. Okay, guys, we're not we're not winning. Like GGs. Okay, we lost already one point. Ah. <sighs> Of course they had to sneak the hard one in there. I don't think I'm ever solving this one. I just need more time. That's what I need for this one. We would have to solve for one variable and then plug it in the other one. And then, yeah, three systems of equations. It looks like our time is up. Honestly, I would argue I need more minutes because I'm explaining these questions instead of just answering them. But... Yeah, looks like we lost a point. 7 over 3, yada yada. I answered everything else, I think. So, okay, it may be, like, some questions are ridiculously easy, but then there's some of them that are like this. This one I don't even think I would be able to do without a cap, like, with a calculator. Ah, X, okay. No, that's an interesting one. I just need more time for it, that's why. Hmm. It's probably another way to tackle it. Alrighty, now we're gonna start a new timer. This one's 55 minutes, and we're doing the math calculator section, and then we'll go over the answers at the end. All right, you guys ready? 
I have my calculator pulled up. I'm going to turn on the light actually quickly. Give me a second. Mm. Alrighty, calculator section, three, two, one, we're starting. Makayla is playing an event in the 5,400 5, square foot room. There should be at least 8 square feet per person. What is the maximum number of people that could attend this event? Square foot, okay, so five four zero zero um feet squared. Um maximum number of people, okay. Eight at least eight feet squared. Literally multiplied. I mean divided. So now I'm typing five fifty four hundred divided by eight into my calculator and I'm getting six seventy five. Right? Yeah. Yeah, that's the maximum because, okay. Okay, we get, oh, so easy angles. I love them. Three lines intersect at point P if X is 65, Y is 75. Yeah. Um, what is the value of Z? Okay, well, we know P is also 75, 65, and all of them add up to 180. So now I'm doing 180 minus 65 minus 75, and we get our Z. Now I'm typing that into my calculator. Our answer should be 40. This is probably true also because, um, yeah, because these lines, like, yeah, okay, Z, I'm not gonna explain it. Yeah, Z is 40, guys, know your angles. Um, oopsie. Oh, this is easy. What is the value of X? Okay, well, we can just add it up. Let's see, three over six X minus one over six X equals one we just wrote it re-rolled that one half x um we get two over six x equals one times six times actually no let's rewrite that one over three x times three times three x equals three oh yeah we can check that quickly three over two equal minus one half is equal to one that is true hey look at that i'm not gonna read the question Shift it three units upward. Actually, I am, I guess. Oh, boy, I'm so tired. Okay, it's got a blur. It shows eight data points. A line of best fit. Shift it three units up. And the new line of best fit for the shifted points is drawn. How will the value of the y-intercept of the new line compare with the line shown? Oh, three units up? Oh, that is so easy. If you just put all these units up, then you're moving the whole line up. The y-intercept will increase. Because this line will no longer be here. It will now be like somewhere right here. And that means the y-intercept is increasing. Line L and K in the xy plane above our graphs of the equations in the system. How many solutions does a system of equations have? Literally one. Why? Because the only time when both of them are equal is at one point. Gerardo has three blue shirts and W white shirts if his closet in his closet, and these are the only shirts in his closet. If Gerardo selects a shirt at random from his closet, which of the following gives the probability that Ger Gerardo will select a white shirt? Three blue shirts, W white shirts. Yeah, W in the chat. We do W. Okay, yeah, I already see the answer. Let's see. Yeah, this. Why? We have. Let's say we have five white shirts, and we have eight total shirts in the closet. Chances are five out of eight. Yeah, that's literally the reason. This this right here do not get do not get confused this is the probability of getting the blue shirts or dealing with white shirts it's like the white shirt and the other ones just don't make sense in the context god damn this one's wordy the vertical height in meters of the upper arch of the uh, above the roadway can be water which is well actually the horizontal distance along the roadway in meters from the entry to the bridge okay we see the graph in the graph, the point zero zero represents the entry to the bridge. Which of the following points represents the exit from the bridge on the opposite end? There's no way it's that free. You look at the graph. You just take the x and the y will be the same. There's no way. Oh my god, what is this? 
There's no way. I mean, I guess there is, but... Yeah. Guys, the answer is that. Why? Because that's where the opposite end is. Exit from the bridge is literally the other zero. Like, what? Okay. I mean, I could quickly type it in my calculator to double check I know what I'm doing, but like... I don't really need to. Hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I guess that's right. I mean, kind of an interesting question. Okay. Line passes through the point and has a slope of yada yada. We could use the point slope. Y minus 2 equals 5 X. Because X is nothing. Um, then we get Y equals 5 X plus 2. Yep, and we could check it. Plug in zero, you get two. Yeah. And the slope of five. Yeah, that makes sense. Right? Yeah. Why intercept? Okay. Um, slope of the line of best fit. Okay, well, let's draw the line of best fit. Close enough. Mm -hmm. There we go. Um, let's say, what do we, yeah, let's do this line. No, no, let's do, like, from this point to, like, actually, I don't think that was the line of best fit. Let me try again. Start right here. Okay, I'm gonna, god dang it. I would say the general slope of that is like 20, okay, rise of 15 over, we'll say this is 1, we'll say this is 8, 7. So it should be around 2 point something. Yeah, that looks reasonable. Let's see if I actually predicted it. Yeah, I'm very close though, 15 over 7. 15 over 7 is ridiculously close actually. I may have called it. Um... Yeah, that's what it looks like for me. Um, like, yeah, 15 over 7 seems to be the move. Um, it is defined above which of the following is not an x-intercept of the graph of the function. Not an x-intercept. So, is negative 4? Yes. Why? Because one of the products is 0, and then the whole thing becomes 0. That is an x-intercept. Correct. Negative two-thirds. Let's see. Plus three over two. This one. Because this one also zero. And this one also zero. Yeah. Okay. God dang it. The length 18 inches of a channel catfish in the Iowa River T years after the first year of life can be approximated by the linear function yada. Some values are yada. We have our... Oh, and then we have another function okay another function to find the length the length and inches of flathead so that we're dealing with channel and flatheads I guess that's important to note which of following is closest to the expected age to the nearest whole year Both are approximated, so this makes sense. According to which of following is closest to the expected age nearest whole year? Flathead, catfish, flathead. We're using the second one. The second one. That is 31 inches long. We do 31. 31 equals 3t plus 4. Minus 4. Minus 4. Divided by 3. Divided by 3. We get 31 Wait, no, let's just subtract 4 automatically. We get 27 divided by 3, which gives us our T. T is 3, 9. Oh, crap. Where did I mess up? <clears throat> Flathead catfish.
31 minus 4, 27 divided by 3, that's like 9. But if it's 10, okay, I mean, you know what? 10 is close enough. Like, there's no way they want us to get 9. I mean, they wouldn't put 9. They didn't put 9, so I'm assuming it's 10. Hmm. <clears throat> After the first year of their life, 9 plus 1. Okay, guys, I saw. I see what I messed up on. Yeah. Dang, so wordy. Like, I missed that. Which of the following equations should, could, could define C as a function of T? Oh, okay, they want us to make an equation for this. Oh, that's a little easy. We can make it up here. Rise of 2.5 per X. Yeah, that seems to be common. If we subtract 2.5, we get 6. So, y equals 2.5x plus 6. Yeah, that seems reasonable. There it is. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, why is this so big? Okay, what is the range in years... What is the range in years of the mean ages of the patients surveyed who had contact lens fittings in the country shown? Range. We're looking for range in years of the mean ages. So range. Take the biggest, we take the smallest. Take the biggest. And we take the smallest. And we subtract. I'm going to type it in my calculator to save time. 9.7. Which best approximates the number of patients surveyed who received refittings in New Zealand? Wait, what? I need to read the context, I think. New contact lens fittings and refittings. Oh, refittings. So we're looking for this. Refittings. Refittings in New Zealand. New Zealand. New Zealand. Let's see here. I'd say that's like a solid. Like. Let's see. I'd say the refittings percentage for New Zealand is approximately like. Like. Mm, I don't want to say, let's say 65. 65%. Number of patients who received, okay. Total fittings, New Zealand, 721. We take that, we take 65% of that. 0. 0.65 times 721. We get 468.6. Okay, it's probably this one. Close enough. We get We got 468. 0.65. I guess that's close enough. Let's do 60% and add a little bit to it. Yeah, if we if we do 60%, we get 432. And then if we add a little bit to it, we get 447, which makes sense. Because it does look like it's above 60% by a slight margin. A park ranger asked a random sample of visitors how far they hiked during their visit. Based on the responses, the estimated mean was found to be 4.5 miles with an associated margin of error 0.5 miles, which of the following is the best conclusion from these data.
Hmm. It is likely that all visitors hiked between. No, that is not true. Statistics wise, there could be outliers, which could be changing the data. It is likely that most visitors hiked exactly. Exactly, no. In the range, probably. It is not possible that any visitor. No, that's not true. Yeah, there could be outliers always. It is plausible. Plausible is a key word in statistics that we like to use when we, we deal with margin of errors and like um, people and means. So it is plausible that the mean distance hiked for all visitors is between that. It's plausible. Although it could go outside of it. There is a chance. It's just not as likely. So it's plausible that it's in that range of 4.5 minus 0 0.5 and 4.5 plus 0.5. Mm -hmm. This one's really wordy SAT for some reason. They really like their word problems. The table above shows the absorbed mating frequencies among a group of fruit flies raised on either starch medium or maltose medium. Hmm. Observed mating frequencies. Observed mating frequencies. We're looking for a fraction of the observed mating frequencies between fruit flies on the same medium. So, same medium is starch with starch. We're looking at this one. Maltose, maltose. We're looking at this one. We take both of those out of that. That's like 42 out of 59. What are these problems? Why are they so wordy? SAT is not like this. Figure above shows a graph with six regions that correspond to temperature and degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah. <laughs> so prisms, we're looking at this side. Temperature and humidity. We're looking for temperature above 10 Fahrenheit. Out of the question. And we're looking for humidity less than 0.1. Hmm, interesting. So 15 Fahrenheit point point eighteen. That's too much. That'll give us needless in columns, I guess. 20 and 0 0.02, 20 and 0 0.02, that's like somewhere right here. That will give us prisms. 30 and 0.08, 30 and 0.08, that's like right here. That will give us this description. Our answer, C. Another sample. Oh, well, how we love statistics. Sample 44th graders were selected at random. 42 completed survey about the morning announcements. Random, I guess that's a keyword. Announcements were helpful. This is the largest population to which the results of the survey can be applied. A sample of 40 fourth grade students. So it could be all fourth grade students at this given school. Because they were randomly selected, we can generalize outside the sample. All fourth grade students at the school, that is true. All students at the school, no, because we only dealt with fourth graders, and no, that's definitely not it. Ryan's comparing five different hay ballers. Ballers. Machines that make ball, ba not ballers, they're called bales. Bales, machines that make bales of hay. The bales made are all in the shape of cylinder as shown below. Price of each hay baler and the dimensions of the bales of hay it makes are shown below. A, B, C, D, E. We get our bales diameter range. Width. 
in price. Of the following, which is the closest to the width of bales made by hay baler A to the width of bales made by bay haler B? Ratio D. A to D. Boop. Boop. Alrighty. Um, oh, they're all to one. We just divide this by 62 and this by 62. We get 0.74. It's got to be it. So this is equal to 0 0.74 divided by, not divided by, but 2, 1. Because we're dealing with bail width of A and D. Price exceeds. By which the price of hay baler A E exceeds the price of hay baler C. E and C. So what we do is what is, what is the number? 46900? 30, 32,000. Let's type that in our calculator. We get 1.465625. Subtract 1, we get 0.4656, which is 46%. Oh my god. How nice. Which ordered pair is the solution to the system of equations above? We can add both of them. In which case we get 2x equals x squared minus 2. And then we could move everything. And we get x squared minus 2x minus 2 equals 0. Um, all right. Multiplies to negative 2. Adds to negative 2. That's a toughie. Hmm. Oh, first of all, X and Y. Um, X minus Y has to be 1. This one could make sense. This one does not make sense. Root 3 minus negative root 3 will give us 2 root 3. Boop. This one makes sense. And this one, yeah, that one makes sense. Okay, well, that didn't help us. I guess we could do plug and check for this one. Because it seems to be a little too complex. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, I guess we could, fudge. Yeah, because we're dealing with square roots, I guess we have to use the quadratic formula. Um, fine. Let's use this one to figure out what x is. Negative b. Actually, I should just rewrite the quadratic formula for y'all. b squared. Negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Negative b. That's okay. Let me wipe my phone a little bit. 2 plus minus square root b squared 4 minus 4a. Over 2. 2 plus minus square root of 4 plus 8, which is 12, over 2. We have a 4 in there. 2 plus minus 2 root 3 over 2, which gives us. Yeah. We ignore the negative. Makes no sense in this context. Okay, exponential function passes yada, which following is not true. A line can be drawn that does not intersect the graph of G. Probably true. 
It says not true. Okay. That's definitely true. You could just like draw one line that goes like this, whereas this one just actually nah. If this one goes like this, you could literally just draw a line right here. On the xy coordinate, obviously. Um line can be drawn that intersects the graph g at exactly one point. That's also true. If we have a graph like this on the xy, we literally just draw a graph a line like poop. Curse that one out. A line can be drawn that intersects the graph at that is also true. That would be called a secant line. Someone who's taking calculus currently. Yeah, one line such as this. Yeah. Seven more straight. Yeah, that one. A line can be drawn that intersects the graph at exactly three points. If it's a line, if it's a straight line, oh, no. Nah, we are never getting that. Right triangle, the tangent of one of the two acute angles is root 3 over 3. What is the tangent of the other acute angle? Um, If it's acute, that means minus 9. Okay. Hmm. Oh, it's a right triangle. Boop. Boop. Oh, but it's not necessarily an isosceles right triangle be like a, this type of triangle tangent of wo of one equals opposite over adjacent tangent of the other that could be literally if we're talking if this one is root three over three then this one is Opposite over adjacent, 3 over th root 3. This one. That's simple. I'm sorry if I'm not explaining them in depth. I'm literally kind of tired. In the XY plane, the line L has a slope of 2. If line K is perpendicular to line L, which of the following could be the equation of line K? Perpendicular? The slope has to be a negative reciprocal. If that's for L, for K it has to be negative one half for that to be a case we have to figure out when oh i already see the no i don't for this one if we add 10x and divide it by negative 5 we get negative 2 nope if for this one we subtract negative 3x and divide it by negative 6 we get a slope of one half nope for this one if we subtract negative 4 and then divide it by negative 2 we get a slope of 2 this one, if you subtract negative x and divide by 2, uh, and divide by whatever the y coefficient is, we get negative 1 half. Our answer is D. Can they stop with these wordy problems? My eyes genuinely hurt. Oh my god, why did they write an ELA paragraph in here? A diagram above represents Edward G. Hoff's concept of space surrounding a person defined by four non overlapping regions. Yeah, okay, Mr. Hall. Intimate space is the region inside a circle of radius 1. I guess we could mark that, can we? 1. Personal space is the region within the circle of radius 4, but outside an inmate circle. 4. Social space, radius 12. Um, public space, 25. What is the area in square feet of the shaded region representing a person in social space? Ah, crap. GG. Okay, what we do, we find area of social space, and we subtract area of... Oh, oh okay. We find the area of social space, and we only subtract the area of personal space. All right, let's get started. Remember, area equals... No, not 2 pi. It's pi r squared. Social space area would be... We have 12 feet. So, 12 times 12 times pi. 144 pi. But that's not our answer. 
And you might be okay, that's our answer. No, that's not our answer. Um, we have to find the personal space area now, which is, well, what is personal space? Personal space is four feet. So that's 16 pi equals area. So now we subtract 144 minus 16. We get our answer of 128. Interesting how 127 is on there. Do not be fooled. God dang, all this yapper is going to make me fall asleep. And he created a batch of green paint by mixing two ounces of blue paint with three ounces of yellow paint. She must mix a second batch of the using the same ratio of blue and yellow paint as the first batch. Two ounces blue paint, three ounces yellow paint. She must mix a second batch using the same ratio of blue and yellow paint as the first. If she uses eight ou five ounces of blue, how much yellow? Okay, that's not bad. That's not bad. Two times what gives us five? Five divided by two. That's what. Now we multiply five divided by two times three. And then we get 7.5. Crap. Uh, that 7.5 in relation to three is... Ex okay. Exactly five ounces? No. Yellow paint needs to be more. Three ounces more than the amount of yellow paint used in the first. No, three plus three is six. That's not what we're doing. Um, yeah, you're doing a half more. Yeah, that's it. 1.5 times the amount of yellow paint used in the first batch. Well, if we use three in the first batch, that would only give us 4.5. That's not enough. That's less. 1.5 of the blue paint. Now that makes more sense. 5 times 1.5 gives us the amount 7.5. That's correct. And th See, this one is actually nice. A is constant for what values of A? Infinitely many solutions. Okay. A. X minus 12 minus 8X equals 8 to 12. We add. Oh, this is so easy. We add 12 to both sides. In order for them to be infinitely many solutions, A and 8 have to be the same. So for any X value, they'll always be the same. Yeah, okay. There's another way to think about it, but I'm not going to go into it. We're almost done when we have 22 minutes left. That's actually cool. A wholesale price of a kilogram of lentils decreased by 1% from previous month for six consecutive months. The effects is the number of months since the price began to drop and the Y is the constant of kilogram of lentils. Model the cost of lentils over the time period. The wholesale price of a kilogram of lentils decreased by 1% from the previous month of six, for six consecutive months. Decrease is a key word. Why? Because we won't be multiplying by 1.01. .01. That means increase. We'll be multiplying by 0.99 because that's decreasing. That that means every time it's 1% less than the original. When we're doing 0, this becomes 1. The original is 1.65. Then you do months and it begins to drop. See, is our answer. In this case, you could argue... However, y will always be increasing in these two. Because whatever x is, if x is increasing, y is increasing. For this case, if x is increasing, y is decreasing. I guess that's one way to argue. All the rest will begin to increase. But the price is dropping. The price is dropping. Okay. True for all x is greater than 0. Where r and t are positive constants, what is rt? Okay, 2x plus 5 plus 3x minus 2 is equal to rx plus t. 2x plus 10 plus 3x minus 6 minus 6 equals rxt.
r equals 5, t equals 4. <laughs> 20. 5 times 4 is 20. That's what the original question is asking. If ax plus a equals 3, where a is non zero constant, the show following must be equal to x plus 1. <laughs> Make sense? Hopefully my work is followable. You take out the a, x plus 1, and then equals 3, and then you divide by a, so you get x plus 1 equals 3 over a. Yay, calculator section will, I mean, bruh, I meant free response. I'm tripping, man. Square both sides, literally, x plus 4 equals 121 minus 4 minus 4, x equals 117. The two bog plots above summarize the distribution of number of fish caught each day on two commercial fishing boats. By how many fish does the median number of fish caught each day on boat B exceed the median number of boat A? Boat B exceed, okay, median in these box plots is, well, what's in the middle of the box plot, which is this. In this case, this is 40. In case of A, it is 35. 40 minus 35. Their answer. Yeah, that makes sense. If A is the mean of B, wait, if A is the mean and B is the median of the nine consi wait. Oh no, not the same problem. Okay. If A is the mean and B is the median of nine consecutive integers, what is the absolute value of A minus B? Okay, let me think about this one. Nine consecutive integers. Consecutive. Interesting. We talking like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The median of this is one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six plus seven plus eight plus nine. As 45 divided by 9. So the mean is equal to 5. But the median is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Median is 5. Mm -hmm. If they're consecutive... I believe median and mean will always be the same. We could try it with another one. Let's do 121, 122, and one and etc. 121 plus 122. Um, hold on, hold on, hold on. Good thing. Why is this? Okay. Anyway, 121 plus 122 plus 123. Yada yada. You know. Oh crap. And we divide it by 9. We get 125. And the median is also 125. Absolute value will always be 0. Because the median and mean of consecutive numbers are always the same. I believe. Or not. We could test what happens with 10 values, just for the fun of it. Oh, yeah, even if it's 10 consecutive numbers, the mean and median still are the same. Consecutive numbers, mean and median are always the same. Thus, the absolute value of that will always be zero. How many seconds after it is launched does the object reach the ground? In this case, we're looking for negative 16t squared. We're looking for t, 
when y is equal to 0. OK, take out the 16, actually. Right? 64 divided by 16. It actually won't be plus, it would be minus four. And that would be minus five. Um we could we could divide both sides by negative sixteen and we get and we just What numbers multiply to negative five but out to negative four? Probably negative five and one. Uh, probably, definitely. Okay. Time of negative 1 makes no sense. However, time of 5 does. That's like some physics problem, technically. Just to confirm, actually you could also graph it in your calculator if you know how to do that. I mean, I know how to do that, but I can't really show you my calculator, can I? Hmm. Yeah, yeah, if you do the math, 25 times negative 16 is negative 400, 64 times 5 is 320 plus 80, that's 400, negative 400 plus 400 is 0. So that that's what happens when you plug in t equals 5. Don't we love Ohm's law as an engineer? Electric current... Amperes, potential difference, and volts, and resistance. <clears throat> and resistance, okay. We have resistance of 500 ohms. And its potential difference will be generated by N 6-volt batteries that produce a total potential difference of 6 N volts. If the circuit is to have no a current of no more than 0 0.25 ampere, what is the greatest number N of 6-volt batteries that can be used? six volt batteries that produce a total of potential difference of six n multiply both sides by 500 125 divided by 6. Can we simplify that? Math. Fraction. Nah, I guess that's the most. Let me explain my reasoning. If, okay. If its potential difference will be generated by N6 volt batteries that produce a total of potential difference of 6 N volts, and we're looking for N, if if the total if the potential if the potential difference v in volts is equal to six n because that's how many volts are produced for battery, we're plugging in six n to the top, and then we're solving for n, not n. We're not plugging in n to the top. If we were, we would get that n equals one twenty five, but that's not true, since each battery produces a total of six times the amount of batteries volts. In order for that to be true, we have to use 125 divided by six the amount of batteries, six volt batteries. Because each battery produces six times volts per how many batteries there are. Oh, okay. In a science classroom, when labs are performed, students are selected at lab tables. If the teacher assigns two students to each lab table, is this a logic puzzle? Four additional lab tables will be needed to seat all of the students. Four additional lab tables will be needed to seat all of the students. 
If the teacher assigns four students to each lab table, four lab tables will not be used. How many students are there in the class? Hey, that's so easy. If the teacher assigns two students to each lab table, two additional lab tables, four, okay. We have two students. Don't actually do this on the AP, I mean on the SAT. Um, each lab table. Table, 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 table. If the teacher assigns two students per lab table, four additional lab tables would be needed to seat all of the students. So that means there's 10 students, no? If the teacher assigns four students to each lab table, four lab tables will not be used. Which makes sense because if four, 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 you're only using two full tables and two students go on the third table and the fourth is not utilized. Based on the first statement alone, you can say the answer is 10, can't you? Unless I'm missing something. Students are seated at lab tables. Okay, that makes sense. Maybe I should read this statement before that statement. If the teacher assigns four students to each lab table, four lab tables will not be used. If the teacher assigns two students to each lab table, four additional lab tables will be needed to seat all of the students. There's got to be 10. What is this logic puzzle? I'm actually getting this one wrong too. I might get a 780 on this. Oh, and we have seven minutes. Crap. If the teacher assigns four students to each lab table, four students go here, four students go here, four students go here. The fourth lab table, four lab tables will not be used. Only three will be used. If the teacher assigns two students to each lab table, four additional lab tables will be needed to seat all the students. That is true. Right? As you would need two here, two here, two here, two here, two here. Two times five is ten. But if we have ten students, we put four, four, and there's only two left. The fourth lab table will not be used. That's gotta be ten. Number wise one point two Y X. The number Z is 20% less than Y. Twenty percent. Hmm. Let's solve for Y in terms of Z. Hmm. The number Z is 20% less than Y. The number Z, okay. The number Z is 20% less than Y. The number Z is how many times? Z is what X? We have to get Y in terms of X. So, Y equals x divided by 1.2 which means 0 0.8 x divided by 1.2 gives you z and 0 0.8 divided by 1.2 gives you 0 0.67 
Mm -hmm. I think that's right. Or you could write two thirds. So number Z is two thirds of X times X. Let's check our answers. Oh my God, I missed the question. I missed the question. I missed the question. Oh. X, Y plane, line K intersects the Y axis at the point. Line K intersects the Y axis at, okay, that's the. I don't know if I'm allowed to curse. I might have to grab this. X, Y, okay, passes through the point. Okay. Um, y minus 2 equals rise over run. Rise, 0, negative 6. X is zero negative. Okay, rise of eight over two. That's four. Rise of eight over two. Four x minus two. Yeah. Minus eight plus two. Minus 8 plus 2 minus 6. If the point 20 W line it lies on the line. Okay, we plug in X. Okay. Or W equals 74. I think we're done now. We do not have that much extra time left, which is kind of disappointing. I usually do. It's probably because I'm doing it on a smaller screen. I should have like give myself more bonus time for that and because i was also explaining it for so long honestly you know what time to check our answers here's what we're gonna say you would most likely have two minutes left if you do my strategy. Obviously, you will not be talking to anybody on the test, so you'll be moving much quicker than I did. I hope this helped. Now, let's. I'm going to open the answer key. Okay, you will have two minutes now. Okay, you have two minutes left. It's fine, I guess. I'm going to open the answer key, and we're going to check our work. Our goal is 780. I have a feeling we're not getting 800 because of that's um, the three linear equation not the uh the multi multiple line like multi okay you know what i'm talking about i'm talking about that last problem on the no calc one it's rather difficult i'll be able to tell you exactly actually wait shoot we're not getting a 780 if we get two wrong if we get one wrong we might get a 790 or 780 um we're going to start checking our answers now. Oh. I'm going to... I have an answer key. I'm going to move through it and then I'm going to notify you. Okay. Shoot. Okay. Correct. 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 B C D B B. B C D B. Nine over two is correct. Eleven is correct. 
1,220 is correct. 7 over 3 is correct. 210, okay. The answer to this one was 210. We missed one question on this one. Okay. Okay, well it looks like we got a multiple choice here right now. 117 5 0 5 seconds, okay. Wait, 35 is 20. Wait, what did I do wrong? No way, did I actually get this wrong? There's no way. How's 3520? Oh my god, because you can't have an... Uh, oh my, you can't have a fraction if you're dealing with objects. Oh lord. Oh crap. Okay, that's 74. 32? Where'd they get the 32 students from? Okay, you know what? 0.96? Oh my god, I missed so many. Oh lord. I missed like three questions in a row. No, not really. But. Shoot. Yo, guys, uh, this guide is like. Trust, I'm blaming the fact that I'm doing this on the phone. Definitely not that I suck at math. Um, 120 divided by 6, yeah. 20 makes sense. This one, 20, simple mistake. The reason is um, because it's whole number. It's, you know, batteries. You can't have like, fractions of batteries, so it would be 20. 37 is 32. I don't know why 30, like, this question is just dumb in general. There's no way people getting 32 for this like it doesn't tell you how many tables are initially at the in the class it says the four additional tables and then i guess the four lab tables but like it i feel like this is like a logic puzzle rather than math but i guess do look out for those as well it would make sense because like if teacher assigns two students to each lab table, there wouldn't be, you wouldn't need like four additional lab tables will be required to the four that exist. So you'll be using a total of eight lab tables, which makes sense. Eight times two. Wait. What? That means there are initially eight tables. No. That means there are initially 12 tables. Right? If you put two students per each of these tables, that'll give you 32, which is what the answer is. Where does it tell you there are initially 12 tables in this class? If your teacher assigns four students to each lab table,
Four lab tables will not be used. How many students are in the class? Like what? There's no way that's an SAT question. If the teacher assigns two students to each lab table, four additional lab tables will be needed to seat all of the students. Teacher assigns four, you only need eight tables. So I guess we're supposed to... Yeah, it's a logic puzzle. I see what they're saying. If the teacher assigns two students to each lab table, and we have to assume there's 12 lab tables from wherever the hell it says in the problem, it doesn't. 2 times 12 gives you 24, but we need more tables to seat all of the 32 students in this case. So now we need more tables. 4 tables in this case. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 plus 24 is 32. But if we put 4 students per table, we're not using 4 of the lab tables in the class. Because 12 minus 4, we're only using 8 tables. 8 times 4 is 32. Like, what? I guess I'll take a point off myself. Also, there are sometimes curves for these. So, I could convert my score and maybe still get, like, a good grade, but probably not. And then this one. This one I still don't understand. Like, what? how is it 0. 0.96? Let's see. Oh no, oh no. Why is 1.2y is not x? Why is 1.2x? And if that's true, 1.2 times 0.8 gives you, okay, fudge. There it is, 0.96. In total, we missed four questions on the math section. Now, this isn't really a good stance for me because I thought I'd miss less. But now we can check our raw score. Now, okay, now we're going for more than 750 at least. Oh, there it is. Okay. Crap. Um, <laughs> we got 740. You know what? Yeah, now nah, I'm uploading this video anyway. I'll see you all on YouTube.